This, my friends, is what innovation looks like. This is a headphone that's absolutely won me over, not just because of its sound, it does sound good as I'll talk about soon, but because it's absolutely fantastic in the way that III have innovated with the TMA2 Move and Move XE. I'm reviewing them both here because as you'll see, they're almost the same headphone, just with a couple of tiny tweaks. So let's jump in and find out why I am so enamored with these and why these have become my go-to closed back Bluetooth headphone choice. III is a Danish brand that have been around for quite some time now, but I haven't had a lot to do with them until I got my hands on the TMA2 here, which III sent to me directly. So thank you to them for sending me the review samples. And let me start off by explaining what these are intended to be. Both the TMA2 Move and the TMA2 Move XE are closed back wireless or wired headphones designed mostly for DJs, artists, people on the go that want a fairly reference sound. I'm not suggesting these are headphones for producing and mastering of music, but they are very much aimed at creatives. The good news is that shouldn't put you off if you're not a creative and you're just looking for a good sounding closed back portable headphone, these are still a great option. Because they're not tuned dead flat, they have got some coloration to make them a more interesting and enjoyable listen than a true flat headphone can be. And that's part of the reason why I'm so impressed with them. But more than their tuning and their enjoyable sound, the thing that has me most impressed is the innovation. For one, these are a very environmentally conscious headphone, where things are all designed to be replaceable, the packaging is either recycled packaging and or also recyclable itself, and so everything's designed to be as sustainable and gentle to the environment as possible, and on top of that, it's fully modular. What I mean by that is that when you get these headphones, you build them yourself. So when you get the headphones, you get in the box here a whole lot of black plastic bags, and in those bags are all the pieces that you see me dismantling here. So what we end up with is a headband. Now either you're gonna have the headband here, which is for the TMA2 Move, or you're gonna have the headband that's in the carry bag here, which is a more narrow, less padded one. This is designed for the TMA Move XE, or the TMA2 Move XE, I should say, and it's a bit lighter weight and therefore a little bit more compact as well. It's not quite as comfortable, so it's a bit of a trade-off depending on what you're looking for. Now I'm talking about these as two models, the TMA2 Move and the TMA2 Move XE, but in reality, you can mix and match these to make whatever headphone you want. So you could have the full TMA2 Move, but with this headband or you could have the TMA Move XE using the more padded headband. And I'll explain that as we go along. So we've got the two headband choices here. You get as well the pads, so I've got here, these are the full-sized over-ear PU leather pads. But in the bag here, we've also got the pads that make these the XE model. And that is the little on-ear pads. These are made of a different material. It's made from things like recycled plastic bottles. It's a very sustainable material that also breathes well and is designed to give good comfort and actually less isolation. So if you're out and about on the move and you want to hear what's going on and more in your environment, these could be a better choice. They do, of course, deeply affect the sound though, and so it's going to partly come down to the sound you're looking for, and I'll explain that soon. Before we get to that though, let's talk about the most important part of this package. And that's the pair of drivers you get. 
So these are a left and a right driver that are designed specifically to be the TMA2 move drivers. And the reason for that is the move denotes the Bluetooth wireless capability. So these are the Bluetooth modules, specifically the right ear cup has the Bluetooth circuitry inside it. The left, as I understand it, is still just a passive slave. So all of the amplification, the Bluetooth receiver module, all of that's coming from the right cup, and the left cup is just a passive driver. In just a moment, I'll talk about the technology in these, but before I do, let me give you some quick pricing. If you were to buy the TMA Move, the full version one, with the full-size pads and the full-size band, you're looking at $230. US If you go for the more lightweight, more portable XE version, that means you're going to get the more lightweight headband and the small on-ear pads. That comes down to $180. US so there's a fair difference between them, and the sound is distinctly different. Of course, as I've already mentioned, you can go somewhere in between and mix and match the pads and the headbands to tailor it to exactly what you want. But as they're listed on the website, it's 230 for the fully fledged over-ear version, and 180 for the on-ear lighter weight version. What's common to both though, because of these driver modules, is the technology going on inside. Each of these drivers uses what they call a biodiaphragm. I'm assuming it's biocellulose. It's not clearly written anywhere, but the idea as I understand it is it's one of those biologically constructed diaphragm materials, which has the benefits of providing better damping and therefore better acoustic properties. Attached to that in the case of the Move version is the Bluetooth module that I mentioned. So you've got, as I've already pointed out, on the right ear cup, you've got this little button and joystick system. So that allows you to switch on the earphone to toggle up and down the volume or forwards and backwards through tracks. It also gives you call control, of course. So it's a very easy system to work with, quite similar to what's on the Drop Panda. And it's a system that I really enjoy. On the right ear cup, which is the active one, you've also got a USB-C socket on the bottom. That's just for charging. I couldn't find any way to make these appear on my computer as kind of a wired DAC cum headphone. So that USB-C is just for charging as far as I can tell. And then on the top, there's a 3.5mm socket which sends the signal out through the headband and into the other cup. Looking at that cup for a second, it's worth noting that there's a 3.5mm on the top and a 3.5mm on the bottom. And I did find that the instructions that came with the moves were a little bit tricky. It's suggested that you should have this locking mechanism so that when you plug in the cable from the headband, it should twist into place. Interestingly, when you look at the two different sockets, one on the top, one on the bottom, one of them's locking, one of them's not. If you're using the traditional wide version of the TMA2, then you do put the locking socket on the top and therefore it connects to the wire on the headband. But if like me, you've got the TMA2 move, then you actually want to reverse the orientation of the left side cup. And what that means is the top socket is going to be non-locking. So the instructions are a little bit confusing. At first I thought there was a fault. When I eventually flipped it around, I discovered what was going on. And then everything was smooth sailing after that. It does mean there's a chance of the headband cable coming dislodged and you losing signal in the left cup. But it's very unusual. It tends to only happen when you're adjusting them significantly, which after you set up, you're really going to need to do. So it's a minor drawback, a minor inconvenience, but not something worth getting hung up about. The reason that there are the two 3.5mm sockets on here though, is that as I've already mentioned, you can also plug a wire into these and use them as a fully wired headphone. So in a moment, I'll provide comparisons for you of these running wired and running wireless to give you a sense of what benefits or drawbacks there might be using it in each way. The final thing I want to talk about before we get there though, is the Bluetooth codex. The TMA2 Move uses Bluetooth 5.0, which is fantastic because it means it's bringing a low latency Bluetooth transmission with it. So you can very comfortably use these to watch movies, to play games, whatever you want to do if you need the timing accurate. The one drawback for me is I would have liked to see something like Aptex HD or ideally something like LDAC on these. Having a high definition codec would have been a real benefit, but as it is, I did find that it performed really, really well with just the standard codecs available. So having mentioned that these can run wired or wireless, let me talk briefly about what I heard when listening to them in the two setups. One of the things that you always have to take into account when testing a wired and wireless headphone like this is that the sound quality you're going to get from the wired source is going to depend a lot on the source. 
And so for this, I tested it using the TT2 as my amplifier, just to see what the absolute maximum performance of the TMA2 move was. And what I heard was that the sound from these wired and wireless was all pretty similar. And in my opinion, that's great. That means they're not taking a badly tuned dynamic driver here and trying to fix it by applying a whole lot of digital sound processing in the Bluetooth module. Instead, what they're doing is they've got a well-tuned driver and then they're just amplifying it through the Bluetooth module. There was a tiny bit more warmth and sense of bass running it through Bluetooth, but that's likely just coming down to things like the Bluetooth transmission and any effect that the transmission protocol has on that, as well as the amplification module in here compared to the external amplification driving through the wire. Ultimately, what I found is that using these wired and wireless, you're going to have roughly the same experience, depending on the characteristics of the sources I just mentioned, but you're going to hear basically the same headphone. And that's not always true for headphones that can be used wired or wireless. So it's a great thing with the TMA2 Move that you do get that benefit. So now let's talk about what I heard when testing the TMA2 Moves for sound quality. Tonally, these sound very well balanced across the board. I wouldn't say they're perfectly neutral. They've definitely got some character and some flavor, but it's pretty well balanced and nothing is overly colored. There's no distinct peaks or troughs that jump out and distract you when listening to different sorts of music. Everything always sounds very coherent and very well controlled. The bass is solid, but not enhanced. It provides a really good foundation for the mids, but it never bleeds into the mids and makes things overly rich or warm or thick or muddy. Some people like me may wish for just a tiny bit more kind of oomph from the bass, but that's just a very personal preference thing. I've never not enjoyed the bass from these. It's just that my personal tastes would lean to just a couple of dB more down in the sub bass. As I've already alluded to, the mid range is very clean, clear and articulate. It's not at top tier flagship level qualities, but at around the price you're paying for these 230 US dollars, they're performing right at, or maybe even a bit above what I'd expect. There's a slight sense of extra clarity emphasis coming from the TMA2 move, and that does help to bring out the sense of detail and texture from these, but I didn't ever feel like it was overdone. It never got distracting or got in the way of my musical enjoyment, but when I started taking notes and thinking critically about the sound, that's probably the one thing that stood out to me about the mids. In general listening though, you won't really even notice it. It's very nicely blended into the overall sound of the TMA2. Moving up to the treble, things are very crisp, and clean, but with no sense of sibilance. These are a very easy headphone to listen to, but not for any lack of clarity or sparkle. They've got a great sense of treble detail and a good sense of clarity and extension throughout the whole range. Now I should mention, and apologies for not leading with this, that so far I'm talking about these using the full-size leather pads, or PU leather pads technically. I'll talk in a moment about the on-ear experience because it is very different. But we're starting here with what you could consider as the maximum performance level, the full 230 US dollar version, and that's using the PU leather over ear pads. So with those over ear pads on, I would describe the TMA2s as being generally a very natural sounding headphone, pretty balanced across the range, maybe not truly neutral, not ruler flat, but certainly there's nothing that stands out as being overly colored. They're not going to provide a toe tapping experience. They're not the most engaging and absorbing headphone ever, but they're also far from boring. Realistically, they're an ideal tool for a long listening session, doing a bit of editing or mixing where you're not looking for absolute precision and perfection. So again, we're not maybe talking about a production engineer or a mastering engineer type level headphone, but for someone that's just doing general on the fly mixing or you're looking to edit some videos, edit some music, just for an amateur type level, these could be a really good choice. Before we move on and talk about the XE version with the on-ear pads though, let me quickly talk about the spatial qualities when using the over-ear pads. The TMA2 Move with the over-ear pads produces soundstage which is not particularly large, but it also never feels cramped. Sounds are generally pretty well separated, so you can pick out all the individual instruments fairly easily, and the soundstage has a nice spherical sense about it. It's not one of those weird shaped sound stages that's triangular or a really narrow oblong. It does have a nice sense of spherical shape to it, but it's fairly tightly contained just in front and about the same width as the head. The sound staging and the imaging on these is nothing special, but it's absolutely acceptable for a closed back portable $230 headphone. 
So in my mind, the overall performance of the TMA2 Move, that's with the full-sized over-ear earpads, is definitely at or above the price point at $230, US and I'll give you some comparisons in a moment. But before we get there, let me talk briefly about the on-ear pads here. As you'd expect, with so much less seal, it's not going around the ear, just sitting on the ear, and with the different materials being used, these produce a very different sound. Even though we're using identical drivers still, just changing the pads makes the TMA2 Move XE version suddenly a very different headphone. It becomes extremely mid-forward and quite congested sounding in my opinion. It's not necessarily a bad sound, but it's not a sound that I would highly recommend. It reminds me quite a lot of the old Beodynamic T50Ps, the little compact on-ears that Beodynamic used to have, but the sense of spatial quality is nowhere near as good as the T50Ps, which I used to quite enjoy. In the case of the TMA2 Move XE, the sound, as I've already said, is quite mid-range forward, it gets quite congested and a little bit hard to separate the sounds out. The upper bass becomes more prominent, which also makes it a bit less controlled overall. It does bring a bit more punch, but it's definitely at the cost of a more refined musical experience. Listening to a fairly complex and busy track like, say, Hysteria by Muse, things get very, very kind of compressed together and muddy and hard to pull apart listening to the TMA2 Move XE. Again, it's not a reason I'd say not to buy them, particularly knowing that with the simple switch of a set of earpads, you've got yourself a completely different headphone should you want it. But if you were sitting on the fence between whether to spend more on the non-XE version, I would definitely say go straight for that if you can. I think it's a much better sonic experience unless you absolutely want the on-ear pads. As you probably already gathered, just to round out the spatial experience with the on-ear pads, things also get congested from a soundstage point of view. Things get compressed all the way in to almost become just a single blob of sound. And that's where the difference is to my reference to something like the Biodynamic T50Ps that used to keep a fairly good sense of spatial information. The TMA2 Move XE really doesn't do that well. So if spatial qualities are important to you, you probably should bypass the on-ear pads and go straight to the over-ear. The final thing that's probably pretty obvious is that with the on-ear pads, isolation is pretty mediocre, intended to be mediocre, because as I said before, the on-ear pads are designed to let you hear a bit more of your environment for safety purposes, etc. Whereas with the over-ear pads, the isolation is quite strong for passive isolation headphone. There's no active noise cancellation here, it is just the passive isolation from the ear pads. And so let me give you a comparison to a couple of other sort of comparable headphones to try to explain why I think these are so great. These are a tough one to compare though, because I didn't really know whether to treat them as a wired or wireless headphone. So I've done a little bit of both. The first headphone I chose to compare them to is a wireless or wired headphone in the Drop Panda. The Drop Panda is currently unavailable, and I'll explain why I think that might be in a second. It also retailed for 400 US dollars. So that's a full 170 US dollars more than the full version, the over-ear version of the TMA2 Move. And I haven't gone into depth on this comparison because it's a pretty easy one to wrap up. You see, the reason I imagine that the Drop Pandas are not currently available is the fact that they've had some really bad QC issues, QC being quality control. My pair that I have here create a constant noise through the Bluetooth circuit when running wireless. There's been issues with the app that's meant to give you sound ID tailoring options, which is excellent by the way, and does bring a big lift to the sound quality of the pandas. But there have been failed batteries, there's been Bluetooth noise like I mentioned in mine, there's been lots of issues. And so with that in mind, combined with the fact that these perform at pretty much the same level, they're not identical, but they're so close that I'd have a very hard time recommending the pandas over these. With all that in mind, it's a really simple win for me to say get yourself the TMA2 Move if you're looking at those two options. These are modular, you can tweak them, change things, replace parts if there is a quality control issue. It's a much, much better headphone in my opinion. And so pushing that aside, there wasn't really another closed back, non-active noise cancelling headphone that I thought was worth comparing. And so instead, I started comparing a couple of wired headphones. The first wired headphone I want to mention is the Biodynamic DT700 Pro X, and I've got the review of that coming pretty soon, so if you're interested in the Biodynamic DT700 
or 900 Pro X, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell, hit the like button as well so that YouTube knows you want to see more reviews from me. That one will be coming out within the next month or so, so it's not too far away now. And in short, I'll say it's a review you probably want to see if you're interested in these headphones. But for now, let me do a quick comparison of the TMA2 Move and the closed back DT700 Pro X. The DT700 Pro X is a fully wired headphone, so I've compared these as wired headphones. The 700 Pro X retails for $299 US dollars, so it's about $70 more than the full version TMA2 Move. One of the tracks I used for this comparison was Disappearing One by Chris Cornell, and on that particular track, the 700 Pro X comes across as having a dry mid-range that's more focused on clarity compared to the more balanced overall sound from the TMA2 Move. I'm not saying that either one is better or worse, but there was a definite sense of dryness and kind of emphasis on clarity from the 700s that I found slightly off-putting from a naturalness point of view. On Disappearing One, what that also meant was that Chris Cornell's voice did come across a little bit nasal and a little bit unnatural at times. There was just a bit too much tilt into that upper mid-range. On the other hand, the TMA2, with its slightly more rich sounding mid-range, only slightly more rich, it's not a thick and rich headphone as I've already said, but with its slightly more rich sound than something like the 700 Pro X, what it did was it made for a more enjoyable tonality of mids, but it also compressed the sense of spaciousness and detail compared to the 700 Pro X. So the 700 Pro X did open things up more, whereas the TMA2 move was a bit more natural, but a bit more closed in sounding. What I found as I continued to listen to both headphones was that the 700s to me could become a bit fatiguing over time. They don't have quite the same bass presence as the TMA2 Move, and remember neither of these are particularly bassy headphones, but because of the general tonal balance, I felt like I needed to turn up the 700s more if I wanted to feel the music. Whereas the more balanced overall tuning of the TMA2 Move meant that I was able to get a better sense of the rhythm and the drive without turning it up as much. So you're going to get more insight and more clarity and more sense of detail from the 700s because of their tuning, but it is going to come at the cost of a potentially more fatiguing listen over time. Ultimately for me, by the end of my listening to both headphones across a wide range of tracks, I felt like both were strong headphones, but the TMA2 move for me was the one I would reach for more often. And that comes down to the fact that I think overall the tuning is just a bit more natural and a bit cleaner across the board. There's just a little bit too much targeted coloration in the 700 Pro X, which isn't bad, and it does have its place, as I'll talk about in the dedicated review for those. But for me, for general listening, general purpose editing and mixing and things like that, I do think I would lean towards the TMA2 move. The fact that it's also then a wireless headphone is an extra added bonus, given that it's also cheaper. So for this comparison, the win definitely goes to the TMA2 Move. And that leaves one final comparison, which is the Meza Audio 99 Neos. I'm a huge fan of the Neos because I like the extra bass. I know there's a lot of people out there that prefer the classics because they've got less bass and are probably more balanced overall, but I don't have the classics here anymore. The Neos are the ones I chose to keep, and therefore I'm comparing to the Neos. Again, the Neos, like the 700 Pro X from Biodynamic, are a purely wired headphone. So I'm comparing the Neos wired up using their stock cable, not the upgrade cable, and I'm comparing them to the TMA2 Move, also using wired connections. The Neos are currently priced at $199 US dollars, making it about $30 less than the TMA2 Move. So you could think of it in some ways that you're paying $30 for the benefit of having wireless in addition to a wired close back headphone in the TMAs. During my listening for these two headphones, one of the tracks that came on was This Song Has No Title by Elton John. On this particular track, I felt like the TMA2 lacked a little bit of space, but all of the different sounds, the instrumentation, the vocals, everything was still clear and really well defined. There was a good sense of differentiation between them, but it was overall within a relatively small sense of space. When I moved over to the Neos, I felt like the vocals were pushed more towards me and all of the overall sound had a bit more energy to it. It was a bit more energetic, a bit more forceful, not necessarily in a bad way, but just a bit more dynamic, you'd probably say. Ultimately, I felt like both were pretty much on par if I had to nitpick though, I felt like the piano sounded a tiny bit boxy through the 99neo, 
whereas the TMA2 move had a better sense of overall refinement and balance across the frequency range. On This Song Has No Title, there's not a great deal of bass for the 99 Neo to really stretch its legs with its prodigious bass production, but as I played through various other tracks, what I heard from the two was that with the different ways they're tuned, the TMA2 move has more of a sub-bass emphasis overall. It's not that it's tuned with a sub-bass lift, but the overall balance allows you to hear more sub-bass in the mix compared to the 99 Neo where the bass emphasis happens higher up in the frequencies and therefore tends to overshadow the sub-bass. So you tend to get more bass at all frequencies from the 99 Neo, whereas with the TMA2 move, it's a more balanced overall presentation. Ultimately, I thoroughly enjoyed listening to both headphones. I wouldn't complain about having either as my only go-to wired closed back headphone. But if I was given the opportunity to choose one or the other, I do think the TMA2 move would still win even if I was only using it wired. As a pure wired headphone, I just feel like it's got a tiny bit more refinement and a tiny bit better overall tonal balance than the 99 Neos. And I do thoroughly enjoy the 99 Neos, so that's more a compliment for the TMA2 move more than it is a knock against the 99 Neos. Of course, then the bonus being that you've got a wireless option here as well, and the TMA2 move becomes a real winner. So as you can probably tell at this point, the TMA2 move are now going very, very high on my list of recommendations for a closed back, wide, or wireless headphone in that $230 US dollar budget range. In fact, so far, anywhere up to 300 or maybe even 400 if we consider the Drop Panda as a reference point, the TMA2 Move is a fantastic choice anywhere in that ballpark. They're incredibly comfortable when you have the thicker, fully padded headband. So I do recommend, if you can, getting the fully padded headband. It's a much, much better and more comfortable system. Remember, you could always start with the less padded headband and upgrade later. It's as simple as you saw me here, pushing things on or pulling them off. So with the fully padded headband and the full-sized over-ear PU leather cups, these are an absolutely brilliant headphone. They're comfortable for long sessions. They're lightweight. They're very, very durable. This is all made of some sort of hard wearing plastic. It looks like it's going to handle pretty much anything you could ever throw at it. And it's fully replaceable should you damage a part. So there's so much going for these. There's innovation. There's environmental responsibility. There's great sound. There's fantastic wireless and wired capabilities. It's got really everything you could ask for, except a high definition Bluetooth codec. That's probably my one and only knock against the TMA2 move. So if you're in the market for a headphone like this, that being a closed back, wired or wireless headphone, then do have a look at these. As always, I'll put links down below where you can click through and pick up a set of these for yourself. Remember, you can go over to the III website and design your own. You can mix and match bits and pieces. I believe they're available in white as well as the black that you see here. And ultimately, whatever combination you choose, you've not locked anything in. So jump in, grab a pair if these are of interest to you, have a play, upgrade bits, swap bits out, have a great time, and along the way, enjoy some fantastic sound quality. So I want to say thank you again to III for introducing me to the TMA2 Move Wireless. I don't do many reviews of wireless headphones anymore because I generally don't find them that interesting. But the fact that this was a proper wired headphone as well really sparked my interest. And I want to say thank you to III for making me aware of this absolute gem in the headphone marketplace. If you've found this review useful, maybe you're as excited about these as I am, I'd love it if you hit subscribe and the like button to let YouTube know to share this video with other people like you and to make sure you see other videos like this in the future. For now though, I'll leave it to the music, so happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm.